Designing for Dinghies. In this series of videos, I am showing what it was like for me to build a 14-foot Aber dinghy. I'm partway through the process right now, and the idea is to give those of you who might be in the same situation as me, who have never built a boat before, but have always thought it'd be fun, a picture into what it's actually like to do the process. Today, um, I'm gonna show some footage that was actually taken just prior to the COVID pandemic lockdown last um, spring. And um, that's why Rob and I are together and we're not wearing masks. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys the process of putting the shear strakes on the boat. The shear strakes in our boat are made out of oak. They're half an inch thick and they had to be long enough to go the entire curvature of the top strake, which is pretty, it's the longest strake on the boat. And um, in order to do that with the wood that was available for us, we had to um, scarf together two planks to get the full length. is cutting the 12 to 1 scarf and that angle is um, what gives us a nice long surface to get that epoxy gluing together. You might have been able to see that both of those planks were cut at the same time, stacked one on top of the other to get exactly the same angle. And you might notice here that the two planks come in at a slight angle to each other and that's to account for the curvature of the shear strike. Here is the pattern and we just clamp these, screw these together really well so that the scarf joint would be um, glued thoroughly with the epoxy last night. So now I can unscrew these and we can start seeing how the pattern will fit on them. <laughs> double stick taped the pattern down onto the shear strake and Rob here is cutting around with the router bit. He's only cutting part way through. Then we use the handheld jigsaw to rough cut and then the router to finish the cut. And I'm just vacuuming along behind to clean up all the sawdust. Unfortunately, the tape that we used was a little bit gummy and it wound up sticking and leaving a residue onto the plank, so Rob's scraping it off there. Once we had the shear strakes all the way cut out, the next step was to clamp them up onto the boat and measure out exactly the right position for them to sit up against the hull. plans were really good about saying exactly where the shear strake should line up with the stem and the transom. So it's just a matter of making sure that everything was just right before we started to actually attach it. Then I just went back around with the pencil and made sure everything was marked well. Just 
just as with the other strakes, the shear strake needed to be slightly shaped so that it would taper in at the bow and the stern, and also the angle would fit perfectly with the previous strake. Once we were ready to start the gluing, in order to make it easier, we decided to steam the ends of the strake. And how we did that was we took Rob's wallpaper remover, which is a little hot, um, steamy box, attached to a hose, and the hose fed into a little sleeve that we made out of um, taped up plastic tarp. And then we slid it onto the plank, we clamped it together, and we let it sit like that for about half an hour. Once the plank was good and steamy, we uh, very carefully removed the plastic. It's really hot, so we had to be careful. And then um, it was just a matter of clamping the strake into position so that it would start to conform to the correct shape of the boat. And then we started the process on the other end.
So on this side everything went much the same way. We just waited for it to get nice and hot. We unclamped it. We removed the plastic and then we clamped it down onto the construction frame so that it would conform to the shape of the boat. And then we let it sit like that overnight. Doing the port side shear strake was pretty much exactly the same as the starboard side. The only thing was we had to remove the starboard side strake once it had dried so that we'd have room for this side to curve around in the bow since it's still a little bit long. If I ever build another boat like this, I'm definitely going to invest in a bunch of clamps that are deep enough to reach in the full length of a strake so that I can just clamp these things together instead of having to drill so many holes, which obviously I'm going to have to patch later on. 
but um, as a learning process, I think it all worked out okay. To admit that gluing on the shear strike was really stressful but the good news was that after the steaming process the plank really held its shape super well and it just went right on there it fit perfectly we tried to minimize the places where I had to screw into the frame to hold the strike on there and I put them right up against the bottom edge because there will in fact be a rub rail that runs along there that should hide those in the end. And all in all, it went really well. So based on the success of the port side strike, we did exactly the same thing on the starboard side.
One major downside of this method of construction is that there's a lot of squeeze out that happens on the inside of the boat that you can't clean up very easily when you are screwing into backing blocks. So later on when we flip this thing over, there's going to be a lot of um, sanding for me to do. Well, that's it for today's video. I've got more videos coming along. It's taken me a little bit longer to produce the videos now that I'm back to my normal day job, but um, I will get them out as soon as I can. Until then, take care. We'll see you later.